Mm -hmm. It's a journey, isn't it? Yes. And we haven't a clue, us Western guys, really. I know. What do you think, Veronica? I can tell. We don't have a clue? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. C kind of, I don't what know. What do you think? Hi, he's Veronica Olson. And she's Joe Ricards. Do you want to do that? You know what? Maybe what? we can do it. I think guys need it, girls need it. So we'll do it. We'll do it. What will we do? Sounds we'll, right. We'll, we'll talk and we'll, we keep talking and we, we, we will... <laughs> I thought you were used to live. <laughs> no, I no, am, no. but that was with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Veronica Olson. And I'm Joe Ricards and welcome to He Said... She Said... Ukraine! Ukraine. So, Veronica, you're looking absolutely smashingly beautiful as always. Thank you. <laughs> I, I won't say you too. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not beautiful. I'm just, I'm just. You just. I'm just simply me. handsome. Oh wow, jeez. Now I'm blushing. So, Veronica, let's tell our viewers why we created our show. He said, she said, Ukraine. Um, basically, why? Because if you're a guy that's decided you want to check out finding your half, your other half. Uh, mm -hmm. In Ukraine and Slavic country, uh, we see the guys need help, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, would you yes. agree? A lot Very of help. much. A lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of help. Yeah, yes. I mean, all guys need help to meet, I think. Uh, all, uh, women from all countries, but from uh, Slavic countries, the mindset is so different. You know, mm -hmm. the mentality is so different. And those uh, little things. And the little things, yeah. So, I mean, there's two big challenges that. Uh, you have if you're going to come to Ukraine or Slavic country and look for love. <laughs> really, the, the first big challenge, uh, a couple of cats over there, first big challenge is um, finding a good girl, as I say, right? Because yes. this whole industry known as mail order bride, it's not about creating happy couples, mm -hmm. is it? You're right. I, it, what, I know. It's mostly often business. Yeah, it's about money game. Yeah, I mean, it's scam based, unfortunately. Yeah, um, and, and it's um, unfortunately this ugly industry. So the first uh, and most difficult obstacle is to find a good girl, which we'll help you out uh, with as well in the series. And then the second obstacle is once you find a good girl, winning her heart from the first date to walking down the aisle. Mm -hmm. It's a journey, isn't it? Yes. And we haven't a clue, us Western guys, really. I know. What do you think, Veronica? I can tell. We don't have a clue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, there is one thing is to, uh, to meet a lady and here you think is your happy ticket, as we call it in Ukraine, you say happy ticket, but then you don't know what to do and how not to lose and how not. And I think guys need it, girls need it. So you are a very successful relationship coach, counselor, guru. Oh, I don't really like <laughs> this word, <laughs> okay. but well, uh, well, I would say I love doing what I do. Perfect. I love decoding uh, people's thoughts and help them to understand each other. It's hard enough for a relationship in the same culture, you know, same background, same um, language. I, I almost say, said same gender, but same same <laughs> That's language. That's another show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to you know, to to have complications, but it's much harder to understand when you also speak another language and represent totally different mentality. Yeah, so I, I, I fully agree with you. We see it all the time, right, mm -hmm. guys? seem to be pretty much clueless from the first date to walking down the aisle what to do to um, you know find the Ukrainian lady and then court her mm -hmm. and do what's right they don't know the do's and the don'ts and they screw it up a lot of the time many right? men are trying so hard to to to, to do the right thing and uh, uh -huh. you know a wise woman will see the intention and she will appreciate that the man mm -hmm. is trying to do the right thing uh -huh. but and you know at the same time it's not as complicated and I teach my clients uh, sometimes to feel more than think and with uh, Ukrainian women we are quite emotional we want to to feel that this is the biggest love in our life and therefore we are ready to fly over the ocean and uh, start this adventure you know together uh -huh. absolutely you know it just came to mind that is it true a Slavic lady is looking for a man to come riding in on his white horse 
the knight in shining armor. It's true, right? Yes, it's yeah. true. Yeah. It's true. And uh, if we're going to talk a lot about things that are appreciated so much in Ukrainian culture, but men forget that being living in the U.S. For example, we all dream about shining knight in armor, mm -hmm. which sometimes, as I'm living in the U.S., I know guys can get um, put down for that by Ukrainian women love that they they love the man that like loves to be a man likes to take action and uh, take pride but maybe even forgot how to do that so I just reassure men in you know sometimes they're just not sure they just don't want to screw it up and, and you are in this position when you really care about somebody and you you found this precious flower and you just want for things to work out and by sometimes not wanting to screw it up you really screw it up so you sabotage so yourself I'm, yeah. yes I'm, I'm there to help I, I always try to listen behi behind the words or mm -hmm. in between the words, mm -hmm. what's really happening. Mm -hmm. So our first episode is called, Do You Love Me? Veronica, do you love me? I love when you understand me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, because what? The difference between foreign men and Ukrainian mm -hmm. women is we love to hear and say, I love you. And Ukrainian women? Uh, hold back and wait till they are sure. Right. We wait till we are sure that we mean what we say. Right. Exactly. You know, I met uh, Yulia in Sumi, married to uh, an American man, and we joke about it all the time because he wants her to say I love you 20 times a day. And she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so they had an agreement, um, okay, once a day. Uh, they kind of uh, agreed mm -hmm. on that. But no, it's true, it's a, it's a big problem. The foreign men, uh, foreign people really, men mm -hmm. and women, but foreign, foreign men are wanting the woman to say I love you, but Slavic <clears throat> women don't say it too often. They look yeah. for actions, right? Especially <clears throat> for the first time. Uh -huh. First you, time? Yes. Yeah, for the, yeah. First time means a lot. First time is really special, and yeah. uh, if that's going to be the only thing uh, you will get from this video, guys, remember, don't be in a hurry. And there is something about the things building up, and uh, the romance, and action, and, and play, but mostly that <clears throat> when you say this for the first time, it can be casual. It can be... Cannot be casual. Can, cannot be no, casual, exactly. yes. exactly. Exactly. It needs it's, to, it's, it's momentous. It needs to build uh, to a crescendo, you know, to something special. Ukrainian woman uh, would rather have you say it um, once, in the beginning. Of course, mm -hmm. we, we, ha we develop habits later on, but she would prefer, she would much rather hear you saying this once, but the way that makes your heart, heart beat and with you know with a real intention with a, that mm -hmm. you cannot not say it mm -hmm. with intention behind it with intention what, uh, presented that, with roses that, with a nice mm -hmm. maybe out something special something right. she really loves and uh, lots of action behind the of, words yeah and right. also the way you say it I, I i always it's not so much often you know what you say you can say just casually or as a joke or mm -hmm. You know, just mm -hmm. as you say to to your, to your neighbor, you know, we, we do love everybody, but there are some special people. And if you make the moment special, she will always remember. You know, isn't that a special thing when somebody say, say to you, I love you for the absolutely, first time? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and, and not though, not only the first time, though. It's, it's even in a relationship. Slavic uh, ladies don't say it too often, right? Whereas foreign <clears> men... <throat> They say it and they like to hear it back. And there's this, there's this imbalance in the I love you uh, mm -hmm. story, don't you think? You yes, find that? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah. And you know, there's this joke. Uh, a Slavic woman, uh, he says, you know, he says, the foreign man says, Honey, you know, you never say I love you. And she says, What do you mean? I told you when we walked down the aisle. And if that ever changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> there is a song, words don't come easy. In uh, Ukraine or, you know, Slavic cultures is when you love, it's something sacred, something you don't throw every, like you don't spread around every day, every minute, every second, something you keep for special occasion. But uh, Ukrainian mm. women also want to feel the affection. So some of them aren't as conservative. Some of them do want to hear it, but they want to hear it with a feeling behind it. That's a big difference between American culture and Ukrainian culture. I think in American culture, 
it's more casual, it's more common to say I love you. It is. And it's you, casual. Slavic people are, women are like, hey, if you love me, show me, don't tell me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we're talk, talk, talk in our culture, right? Foreign yeah. men are more talk, less yes. action. Um, Do you think? Sometimes. sometimes. Somewhat, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I think there is a positive part to actually show your feelings because for some, uh, for some people it means, it, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the truth is always somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. That's why we're going to be talking about these things and how to, f to find this middle solution, how to go maybe midway to satisfy. Because if the person wants to hear it and they don't, they might think you don't love them, but you do. Exactly. Off camera, we were, you were sharing one of your successful client stories. Do you want to maybe mm -hmm. talk about that and how they were yeah. on the verge of breakup when they mm -hmm. came to you? That'd be great. I would say it's one of the most common ones is that when somebody's reaching out to me and have a confusion that seem, things seems to be going well, but he doesn't get, he feels like he, maybe he's not getting return, he doesn't get the same in return and he wants to get it but he just it's basically confusion the most thing i get is just confusion of communication and trying to read the signs trying to understand what's really happening and sometimes i have a bad news sometimes i have a good news mm -hmm. uh, my favorite case is when i have a good news where i can decode the lady's behavior and say that oh she was actually waiting for you to take an action and to prove and very often the guys are ready to take an action and to prove they just don't know that this is a time to do it and that's what she wants yes. he doesn't feel that that's they what she wants they want them to um, respond and they they would uh, prove or propose <laughs> but very often uh, women don't go you know 10 pages love letters before they think that the man is serious it has many reasons behind that but um, yes so my favorite story is when somebody reaching out to me and the only problem there that um, I need to read between the lines and tell him what the message the woman even when the woman say prove it she means so if you love me if I am really so very precious so what you do now you know, yeah. because uh, in our country, men is not in a hurry to commit. And so basically, you know, my, my favorite story is when they realize that it's a time to take an action and she is waiting for it. That's why she's not going all in. She want to make sure she's going the right way. And very often I get very positive result or basically a picture with a ring on the lady's hand mm -hmm. that that's what, you know, what they wanted what she wanted and he finally figured out mm -hmm. um, you know Russian culture if just to sum it, Russian Ukrainian just to sum it up is all about action when she see you you doing the action she started to trust you in American culture people more into words first and then maybe they'll take an action maybe not mm -hmm. I've experienced that myself I was married to a Russian woman for 10 years and so I know firsthand it's don't I mean she's happy to hear I love you but much more so show me that you love me by little things mm -hmm. even just the little things uh, and now I'm, I've been engaged to a Ukrainian lady for 14 months and same thing uh, I don't hear I love you barely you know Mm -hmm. Rarely, not barely, mm -hmm. rarely. Um, and then she looks for signs uh, of love. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we, like I say, it's more the words that matter to us. So mm -hmm. that's a miscommunication that we just need to understand each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a great point about commitment because that's what Ukrainian women, I see that as well. They're looking for commitment from their man, especially because the Ukrainian man is so non-committal. Mm -hmm. Most, not all, of course. Yes. It's very true. And another thing is also how you say it. When you, uh, when you say just, I love you, honey, you know, just like that, or like, bye, I love you. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you are in a long-term relationship, you know this person, you probably say it on automatically just because that's your routine and maybe she will get used to it, maybe she will even like it. But when you in a new relationship and you saying this for the first time, you know, you want to say it though, she remembers this all her life. Right. That's a good point. You heard it from the expert Veronica herself. <laughs>
Great tip, thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about some issues in upcoming episodes. Uh, one of them is going to be, let's talk about sex. How does it make you feel? I knew he'll say that. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, you know, guys, yes. it's a favorite mm -hmm. subject for guys, of course. Yes. And there's a lot of misconceptions, confusions. Guys, mm -hmm. I hear, well, Slavic women are easy. Then mm -hmm. I hear, Slavic okay, exactly. women are, 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 are yes. difficult, they're more uh -huh. conservative. Guys don't really know and, and people don't seem to talk about it. So we're going to just lay it all out, mm -hmm. right? And tell you straight up um, what most Slavic ladies are, certainly what the good ladies are like. Because after all, we work with couples that are good people. Yes. You know, they're looking, when I say good people, that's people without a hidden agenda. They're looking for the, the real thing, true love, mm -hmm. which stands the test of time that you have a happy family and you, mm -hmm. you know, live happily ever after. So that's, of course, what we're talking about here. And mm -hmm. um, so we'll lay it all We'll talk up. about sex. We'll, we'll talk about sex. Okay. So you don't want to miss that episode. Somebody has to talk about <laughs> Might as well be us. What about love languages? We're going to talk about love languages. Mm -hmm. and how yes, we, yes, we will cover not only the, you know, the translation difficulties, but also all the other languages that exist in the world, and they're the same for every nationality. And sometimes we just don't know them, so we don't even know how to please the person, how to, how even to speak what we want. We we presume that the other person know that. Mm -hmm. So the love languages is definitely on the list. Yeah, it's very important to understand what your uh, what your lang love language is, so that you can find a partner that has mm -hmm. the same love language as you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's much easier to go about that way matchmaking uh, than ending up with somebody that has a different love language. Doesn't mean. It's a deal breaker, but it, it can be difficult to figure out the love language. Mm -hmm. you know, as John Gray in Chicken Soup for the Soul calls it. Yes. Uh, uh, tomato soup, soup, chicken soup, right? Mm -hmm. My love uh, language is tomato soup and yours is chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. And I give you tomato soup because that's love to me. And you're like, what's this tomato soup? Yeah. I don't want tomato soup. You want chicken noodle yes. soup. Yes, but I feel that I gave you the best. Yeah, but... And you but don't depreciate. Exactly. So. It's not registering as, I feel like you don't love me. Mm -hmm. And it's the weirdest thing. If you get this dynamic of mismatched love language in a relationship, it can be a relationship killer. So it's important. So we're going to talk about that in an upcoming episode. What else are we going to talk about? Oh. We will talk about the challenges. The, the challenges and... And, and you know good and bad everything and we will welcome your questions about, absolutely, ab absolutely. about what you would like to know because uh, there is you know one of the main reasons why I'm doing my blog and I talk to people Ukraine and the Ukrainian mentality is one of the most undiscovered cultures on the planet it's very difficult to understand the Slavic mindset, is not very enough. different than ours. Yes, yeah, so we will be answering and creating questions mm -hmm. and ideas um, and uh, I will always share the stories and challenges from my clients mm -hmm. because um, they are, I think that they have a relief just to talk about this with somebody who you know, it's kind of hard to talk with American counselor, and I have nothing against American counselors because they're very professional. They, they, I mean, most of them are doing an amazing job, but they don't know a lot about Ukrainian women. Yeah. So that sometimes is very tricky to to figure out what is happening, and the advice they're going to give won't always be. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, because if they don't understand Slavic yes. soul, how can they give? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, know, you would think it's common. Yeah, it, it, you know, because common sense is not so common. And <laughs> exactly. And you exactly. know, don't ever try to. You know, there is this old saying: don't try to understand Russia with brain, feel it with your heart. Same thing about Ukraine. Don't always try to understand everything with brain and logic, but feel it with your heart and with education. So it was good. It was good. That was our first inaugural episode of He Said, She Said, Ukraine. Ukraine. So hope you enjoyed that, everybody. Um, please comment, ask your questions below, and if you tell us what you want to hear from us, mm -hmm. what challenges you're having in your relationships with your Ukrainian or Slavic lady, and um, we get enough of those, we'll make an episode just for you, okay? So, um, Absolutely. Thanks very much, and uh, good luck. Thanks. See you Bye -bye. next time. See ya.